Hi there, this is Eric for Otoy. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of render kernels when working with Octane 308 for Maya. And over the next few videos, uh, we'll dive in a little bit deeper into the various settings for the different kernels that are available, uh, which should help you to understand their properties a bit more and also allow you to improve your renders. For this video, I'm using a scene called Robot and Pilot 01.ma, and it just shows our kind of space alien pilot hanging out with a robot. And they're both looking through a giant magnifying glass at a cube. Why they're doing this, I don't know, but it does give us an opportunity to explore some of the properties of render kernels. So where do you find the render kernel settings? You can get to them by going to the render settings window. And in the Octane render tab under render settings, you'll see that there's a menu for kernels. So we have Octane kernel right here. Now, when you first uh, start rendering with Octane, you may have discovered that if you don't add anything, uh, you get kind of a wireframe. So in other words, if I switch the menu here to not connected, we see a wireframe of the scene. If I want to add a kernel to the scene, I'll use the create new option here, and you can add as many kernels as you want to to the scene so that you can switch between them while you're testing various properties or trying to decide what's the best way to render the scene. So let's hit create new here and by default it's going to create a direct light kernel. And we'll have a video that dives into the uh, settings for the direct light kernel in more detail but I just want to kind of give you an overview here. Um, if you look in the attribute editor for this kernel you can see that we have the settings down here if I unfold direct light, these are the settings that relate to this kernel. So in other words, if I go down here and, uh, for instance, uh, adjust, say, the GI mode, and I'm going to set it to none, so we see there's no global illumination, so we don't see any bounce in the shadows here. So that's one example of how you can adjust this. Now, one thing to pay attention to, of course, is that if you have multiple kernels in the scene, like I do now, I have kernel 1, which is my initial PMC kernel. Make sure that when you're looking at the attribute editor, you're editing the, the um, attributes for the correct kernel. So in other words, right now I have the direct lighting kernel selected. So if I start adjusting these settings, I'm not gonna see any update in the scene. I need to make sure that I go to kernel here and click on this arrow, because right now this says Octane kernel two. So I'll click on this arrow and this will take me to the settings for this one. So it's not a bad idea to give your kernels descriptive names. Sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, nudging to get it to update correctly. But let's rename this one. Let's call it uh, PMC test kernel. Sorry, I don't want to put a plus sign in there. There we go, PMC test kernel. In this case, it did update in the, in the menu. I'm going to switch to my uh, Octane kernel 2. And let's call this, let's make sure we select it, of course. See, I almost renamed the wrong one. So be careful of that because it's getting a little bit confusing. So I'm going to call this direct light test kernel. Now we can see there in the menu. Of course, it's also showing Octane kernel 2, but I believe as we kind of switch between these, the menu should eventually update and show us the correct one. I can always try closing the right render settings and opening them again. Yeah, so there we go. So now we have PMC test kernel and direct lighting test kernel or direct light test kernel. Let's create another one and we'll call this one path trace. Now we can see that we have PMC, direct lighting, and path trace. And of course, now that we've named it path trace, we've got to make sure that we actually set the kernel type to path trace. So that's, that's path trace and kernel. You can tell it's different from direct lighting because we are getting some caustic light patterns right here. Although they're coming in a little bit noisy right now, but again, we'll talk more about how to resolve that when we get into the path trace kernel uh, video. And now let's create one more kernel for info channels. And I'm going to set this new kernel to info channel, which it shows our wireframe by default. Let's call this info channel 
and info channel if I go down to the settings here we can set this to wireframe or we can also use uh, Z depth and then I can adjust that Z depth max to let's say 50 here we go 500 you can see now we're getting a Z depth in there so now I can switch between these various different kernels and see the result so there's our PMC there's a direct light there's our path trace and here's our info channel so the upshot is of course is as you're adding kernels to your scene give them descriptive names and double check to make sure that when you're editing their settings in the attribute editor you're editing the settings for the right kernel because once again I have PMC test kernel rendering here but I have info channels test kernel selected right here and even though these have settings for path tracing and direct light these settings relate to this kernel node only and not the other ones so be careful of that and up next we'll start looking at uh, the direct light kernel in more detail